Hello and welcome to Astrologic, where we bring engineering logic behind every signal. Today, we are starting our variable frequency drive training. In this session, you will learn how a VFD works in detail, how it compares with a direct online DOL starter, common troubleshooting tips, and how VFDs help in energy saving. If you are an engineer or technician working with motors and drives, this training will help you understand VFDs in a simple and practical way. So, stay tuned and subscribe to Instralogic for more engineering tutorials. Let's begin. This VFD training is divided into 10 sections. 1. Introduction to VFD, what is a variable frequency drive and why do we use it? 2. Working principle of VFD, how does it control motor speed and save energy? 3. Internal components of VFD, a look inside the VFD and its main parts. 4. Comparison, VFD versus DOL starter, key differences and advantages. 5. Signal processing and control card how signals are processed and controlled. 6. Real-time example, tank water filling system, a practical application of VFD. 7. VFD protection features, safety features built into VFDs. 8. Troubleshooting guide, common problems and how to fix them. 9. Energy saving using VFD, how VFD reduces power consumption. 10. Summary. A quick recap of everything we learned. So let's start with the first topic, introduction to VFD. Let's begin with the basics. What is a VFD? A variable frequency drive is an electronic device that controls the speed of an AC motor. It does this by changing the frequency and voltage of the power supplied to the motor. Why do we need this? Because by controlling motor speed, we can improve process control, reduce mechanical stress, and most importantly, save energy. VFDs are widely used in industries for operating pumps, fans, and conveyors. These applications benefit from energy-efficient operation and smooth speed control. On the right side of the slide, you can see a typical VFD connection diagram the three-phase input, the motor output, and sensors like pressure or float switches for automation. Below that, you see different VFD models commonly used in industrial setups. Now that you know what a VFD is and why it's important, let's move to the next topic, working principle of VFD. A VFD converts fixed frequency AC power into variable frequency AC power. This process happens in three main stages, rectifier or converter, this first stage converts AC power into DC power. DC link or filter. Here, the DC is smoothed using capacitors and inductors to remove ripples. Inverter. Finally, the DC is converted back into AC, but with a variable frequency and voltage. This is done using IGBT switches. By changing the frequency of the output AC, the VFD controls the speed and torque of the motor. On the diagram, you can see the flow. AC input goes to the converter, then to the DC bus, and finally through the inverter to the motor. The control logic manages the entire process to ensure smooth operation. Next, we will look at the internal components of a VFD to understand what makes this possible. Let's look at the first internal component of a VFD, which is the rectifier section, also called the converter section. The rectifier's job is simple. It converts AC power into DC power. This is the first step in the VFD process. The rectifier uses diodes or sometimes SCRs, silicon-controlled rectifiers, to achieve this conversion. Diodes allow current to flow in one direction, which helps in converting alternating current into direct current. SCRs are used when we need controlled rectification for more advanced applications. On the left side of the slide, you can see the rectifier circuit diagram. The three-phase AC input enters the rectifier, and the output is a DC voltage across the positive and negative DC rails. This DC will then move to the next section, called the DC link or filter. 
Next, let's talk about the second internal component of a VFD, which is the DC bus, also called the filter circuit. After the rectifier converts AC to DC, the DC is not perfectly smooth, it has ripples. The DC bus section removes these ripples and makes the DC stable. This section contains capacitors and reactors, or inductors. Capacitors store and release energy to smooth out voltage fluctuations. Reactors help reduce current ripples and improve power quality. On the left side of the slide, you can see the filter circuit diagram. The fluctuating DC enters the filter, and the output is a smooth and stable DC, ready for the inverter stage. Now that the DC is clean and stable, the next step is to convert it back to AC with variable frequency. That's done by the inverter section. Now, let's move to the third internal component of a VFD, which is the inverter section. The inverter's job is to take the stable DC from the DC bus and convert it back into AC power. But this AC is special, it has variable frequency and voltage, which allows us to control the motor speed. The inverter uses IGBT transistors, insulated gate bipolar transistors. These are high-speed electronic switches that turn on and off rapidly to create a simulated AC waveform. By adjusting the switching pattern, the inverter can change the frequency and voltage, giving precise control over motor speed and torque. On the left side of the slide, you can see the inverter circuit diagram. The DC enters from the top, and the output is a three-phase AC with variable frequency and voltage, which goes to the motor. Now let's look at the fourth important component of a VFD, which is the control card, also called the CPU or logic board. The control card is the brain of the VFD. It processes all the control signals, feedback, and motor parameters. It receives inputs from sensors and user terminals. It decides how the inverter should switch to achieve the desired motor speed and torque. On the left side of the slide, you can see the VFD user terminals. These terminals allow you to connect external signals like analog inputs for speed reference, 0, 10V or 4 to 20 milliamperes, digital inputs for commands like start, stop, forward, reverse, outputs for status indication like running or fault. The control card uses this information to control the motor accurately and safely. Finally, let's look at the fifth important component of a VFD, which is the display and keypad. This is the user interface of the VFD. It allows you to set parameters like motor speed, acceleration, and protection limits. Monitor real-time values such as frequency, voltage, current, and motor status. Perform diagnostics by checking alarms, faults, and system health. On the left side of the slide, you can see a typical VFD keypad. It has a digital display for showing values and buttons for start, stop, and navigation through menus. The keypad makes it easy for operators and maintenance teams to configure and troubleshoot the VFD without needing external tools. Now, let's compare a VFD with a DOL starter to understand why VFDs are preferred in many applications. With a DOL starter, the motor starts with a direct high inrush current, which can stress the motor and the electrical system. A VFD, on the other hand, provides a smooth ramp up, reducing mechanical and electrical stress. DOL starters have low energy efficiency because the motor always runs at full speed. VFDs offer high efficiency by adjusting motor speed to match the process requirement. DOL starters allow fixed speed only. VFDs provide variable speed control, which is essential for many industrial processes. DOL starters do not offer torque control. VFDs can control torque, which is useful for applications like conveyors and pumps. DOL starters have basic thermal protection. VFDs include advanced electronic protection for overcurrent, overvoltage, and other faults. DOL starters are low cost, but they waste energy. VFDs have a higher initial cost, but they save energy and reduce maintenance costs over time. So while VFDs cost more upfront, they provide better control, protection, and energy savings, making them the smarter choice for most applications.
Now, let's understand how signal processing and the control card work inside a VFD. The control card acts as the brain of the VFD. It receives signals from different sources. 1. Analog inputs. These are signals like 4 to 20 milliamperes or 0, 10V, usually coming from a PLC or sensors to set speed or process values. 2. Digital inputs. Commands such as start, stop, and direction. 3. Feedback signals, information from the motor or process, like speed or pressure, for closed loop control. Once these signals are received, the control card uses a microcontroller or DSP, digital signal processor, to calculate the PWM output for the inverter section. PWM stands for pulse width modulation, which controls how the IGBTs switch to create variable frequency AC. This entire process ensures precise control of motor speed and torque, improving efficiency and performance. Let's see a real-world example of how a VFD improves efficiency, a tank water filling system. In the first diagram, the pump is controlled by a DOL starter. When the pump starts, it runs at full speed all the time, even when the tank is almost full. This wastes energy and causes pressure surges, which can damage pipes and valves. In the second diagram, the pump is controlled by a VFD. Here's what happens. The pump speed adjusts based on level transmitter feedback. When the tank is nearly full, the VFD reduces the speed, ensuring smooth flow. This approach saves energy, reduces mechanical stress, and prevents water hammer or pressure shocks in the system. So using a VFD in applications like pumps and fans not only saves energy but also improves system reliability. Now let's talk about the protection features of a VFD, which make it safer and more reliable than traditional starters. A VFD includes several built-in protections. Overcurrent and overvoltage protection prevents damage when current or voltage exceeds safe limits. Undervoltage and phase loss detection ensures the motor does not run under poor supply conditions. Overheating protection protects both the motor and the drive from excessive temperature. Ground fault protection detects leakage current to prevent electrical hazards. Short circuit and stall prevention stops the motor safely during faults or if the rotor stalls. Communication failure alarms alerts when there is a loss of signal from PLC or sensors. These features help maintain system safety, reduce downtime, and protect expensive equipment from damage. Now, let's look at some common VFD faults and how to troubleshoot them. Overcurrent trip. This usually happens when the motor draws too much current. Check the motor wiring and make sure the load is not jammed or too heavy. Overvoltage fault. Inspect the input supply and the DC bus. High voltage spikes can cause this issue. Ground fault. This indicates insulation failure. Check motor cables and insulation resistance. Overheating. Verify that the cooling fan is working and the ambient temperature is within limits. No output. If the motor is not running, check the inverter section, especially the IGBTs, and confirm control signals from the logic board. Communication error. This happens when the VFD loses signal from PLC or sensors. Verify wiring and communication settings. Regular checks and preventive maintenance can reduce these faults and keep your VFD running smoothly. Now, let's talk about one of the biggest advantages of using a VFD, energy saving. Energy saved is proportional to the cube of speed reduction. This means even a small reduction in motor speed can result in huge energy savings. For example, reducing motor speed by just 20% can save nearly 50% of energy. That's a big difference. VFDs are widely used in applications like HVAC systems for controlling fans and blowers. Pumps and fans in industrial processes. Conveyors for material handling. By matching motor speed to the actual process demand, VFDs significantly cut energy costs compared to DOL starters, which always run at full speed.
Let's quickly recap what we learned in this VFD training. VFDs offer superior control, protection, and energy efficiency compared to traditional starters. The main components inside a VFD are converter, DC link, inverter, and control card. We saw real-time applications like water pump control and HVAC systems, where VFDs save energy and improve system reliability. Finally, we discussed how proper troubleshooting ensures reliable operation and long service life for both the motor and the drive. Thank you for joining this session on variable frequency drives. If you found this helpful, don't forget to subscribe to InstraLogic for more practical engineering tutorials.